Welcome to this session on Oracle's Enterprise Manager Database Consolidation Workbench. Today we're going to look uh, a little bit closer on the new Database Consolidation Workbench feature that you find in Oracle's Enterprise Manager 13C. Let's begin with why do we want to consolidate? You want to consolidate because you may have a need to reduce complexity in your data centers, uh, maybe you want to standardize on a specific server configuration in order to make maintenance and support easier. You may want to improve the efficiency, drive up the hardware utilization, get better security, and also to lower the costs. While you're looking at database consolidations, there are some considerations that you may want to explore. So what database consolidation strategy do you use? Can different workloads coexist with the chosen strategy or will they conflict because of the workload characteristics? Can the system that you have chosen to consolidate on handle peak workloads? And how can you perform the uh, migration and the consolidation with uh, reduced downtime? And last but not least, how can you test the consolidation strategy to minimize your risks? There are many different consolidation alternatives. Anything moving from virtual machines, dedicated databases, dedicated schemas, or using pluggable databases. Each approach has its pros and cons. But as you move from virtual machines towards dedicated databases towards pluggable databases, you will increase the consolidation density. Oracle Database Consolidation Workbench is an end-to-end -end consolidation solution and made available in Enterprise Manager 13C. It allows you to do a risk-free and accurate approach to consolidate various databases and through that eliminating guesswork or human errors. The Oracle Database Consolidation Workbench uses historical data gathered from the database and hosts in combination with uh, AWR data to understand what resources these databases consume. Oracle's Database Consolidation Workbench supports Oracle 10 tiered databases or higher. It also supports consolidation to clouds or exadata. It also supports high availability options to minimize downtime depending on what kind of source or destination databases you have. The Oracle Database Consolidation Workbench is an end-to-end -end consolidation solution. It moves the user through three different phases. The plan phase, where it gives consolidation advice by identifying candidate databases for the design consolidation platform using AWR data gathered from the databases. The migrate phase helps us to implement the consolidation plan by migrating the databases to the new platform using the Enterprise Manager's provisioning features. And last but not least, the validate phase, where we can use real application testing's SQL Performance Analyzer to test the workloads on the consolidated databases. The database consolidation allows us to estimate resource utilizations under various scenarios and conditions. We also support three different consolidation modes, database to database using the Oracle multi-tenant features, database to server, meaning you're basically going to servers or exadata consolidation, or Oracle public cloud consolidation. It also identifies conflicts based on workload characteristics, and if Exadata is a suitable option for your consolidation strategy. It provides storage and platform advice, impact based on compression or I.O., as well as storage. Now let's have a look at a demo of the consolidation workbench. As you know, this is a new feature in Enterprise Manager Cloud Control 13C. We begin with going to the Enterprise menu then selecting Consolidate and Database Consolidation Workbench. 
the database consolidation workbench allows us to create what if scenarios for any case where we want to consolidate databases either uh, onto different hardware or to other databases. In order to do this, we have to create the project. And within the project, we can then specify uh, what databases we want to use and where we want to move these databases. Let's begin with creating a new project. Within the project, we have to specify a name and a description. And then we can specify if we want to do consolidation from databases to servers or databases to databases. We are going to do databases to servers. We have to pick the source databases and we can filter out which ones we want to see. In our case, let's just look at the ones in Oracle Redwood Shores. We're going to pick out five databases here for the consolidation project. And as you can see, we are able to do multi-selects here. Then we select them. Now on this screen, we can see the databases we selected and the resources that these databases require in order to work properly. So we click Next. And then we can select where we want to move our databases. So the destination candidates for our consolidation. We're going to pick two servers for this project. Next, we will see how much resources these servers have available for us. So we click Next. In order to do the consolidation estimations, we have to collect a lot of data from Enterprise Manager as well as the AWR reports in the database. On this screen, we decide how much data we want to use for the database consolidation estimate. Let's change the um, date range here. So we go from 0 to 90. Now we click Next. We have the option of using pre-configured scenarios, but we're not going to do that. Before we submit this to Enterprise Manager, we can review everything that we've specified. Let's submit this. The project has now been created. From Enterprise Manager, we can review the source candidates as well as the source workload. The source workload can be viewed either as a line chart or as a heat map. The heat map is really a good view of the resource utilization. Everything from blue with very low utilization up to uh, green, orange, and uh, red being the highest utilization. We can view CPU, memory, or storage. The destination candidates, and finally, the advisor findings. That helps us to understand if there's something that we have to think about. The advisor findings here actually shows us some real problems. The ERP database, for example, seems to be CPU bound, and we are recommended to do some tuning on it. Now let's create a scenario. A scenario is basically an experiment. Uh, what if? By doing a scenario, we can see how would this particular consolidation play out for us. We specify a name, maybe a description. We can also specify how we want to allocate the resources, how aggressive we want to do. Let's go for medium. We can also introduce a scale factor if we believe that we will consume more memory or CPU resources in the future. But let's stick to a one-to-one -one scale factor for now. Next thing we can do is that we can define the compatibility for the databases, but we're just going to leave that. We can specify if we want to use existing servers or a phantom server, for example, when I have extra data machines, or if I want to use compression. We can also specify what is the maximum CPU or memory utilization. Let's go by 70% for the CPU. The database consolidation workbench can automatically map the different databases that we have, and we are going to use that for our scenario. And then we can review all our definitions, but we're just going to submit this. The database consolidation workbench can now help us to understand how successful we would be with our consolidation scenario. Now let's have a look at how well this consolidation would pan out. 
we have our sources, we have the destination servers, and we have the mapping of the databases onto the servers, and we can see that we have four databases on one of the servers. The most important thing here is really the confidence tab, and this indicates here that we have a lot of red, which is a bad indication. If we look at the heat map, we will see a lot of red areas with exclamation points. So this is a good indicator that the consolidation will not be successful if we go by this scenario that we specified. Since this was not a really successful scenario, let's look at some other ones that I already prepared for us. Here I have created three different scenarios uh, doing a consolidation from database to database using Oracle's multi-tenant database feature. This scenario has the same scale factor as the previous one. We don't use any compression. Um, and we can see here that the heat map looks dramatically different compared to the other ones that we had. Since we're using a database to database consolidation, the destination side will look a little bit different. So we have one machine here that hosts all of the different databases that we have. Regardless if we're doing a database to server consolidation or a database to database consolidation, we still have the same kind of metrics and we can see the CPU utilization as well as the memory utilization on the screen. The advisor findings shows that we have a potentially CPU bound data source and we might want to tune that one as well as that we have a mix of OLTP and DSS workloads and we are likely to benefit from a storage solution offered by Exadata. So what happens if we add compression? Here I have a scenario where we're added compression. You can look at the heat map. The heat map hasn't changed dramatically, but let's look at the advisor findings. The advisor findings shows us that we still have some tuning to do. Since we added compression, most of the differences is probably going to be seen in the storage. If we look at the HR database, for example, here we can see the compression estimates that we could have for the HR database. If we would look at the IOPS on the ERP database, for example, we would see that we would have a huge benefit from Exadata on the interconnect bytes. Here we have an impact of 71.3%. If we were to use Exadata instead, I have another scenario here. In this scenario, I'm using a five times scale factor, meaning I'm expecting five times as much load on the CPU and memory. If we look at the heat map, um, this is of course something that is barely uh, exercised. So we have very low load on it. Even if we have a five times scale factor, we see that everything is running on a database machine. And we're actually also using a two node rack here. So all the databases, the pluggable databases are uh, on those nodes. What you have seen in this demo is that Oracle's database consolidation workbench allows you to create different what-if scenarios so that you can find out the optimal consolidation strategy for your databases. We are through the Oracle database consolidation workbench eliminating the guesswork and allowing you to really understand what is going to happen if you decide to consolidate your databases and how can you move forward. Once you have identified the right consolidation strategy, you can use Enterprise Manager and the consolidation workbench to implement this. By clicking implement scenario, we're able to select the migration method. Simply select your migration method and generate the migration command. You can now use this to implement your database consolidation. You can also use the SQL Performance Analyzer feature in order to validate the consolidation. Now let's have a look at licensing. Oracle's database consolidation workbench is part of Oracle's real application testing option. Please make sure that you license this accordingly. In addition, during the three phases of the Oracle database consolidation workbench, you may use other database management packs or options. In the planning phase, 
Oracle's database consolidation workbench makes use of the automatic workload repository, the AWR. This requires Oracle's diagnostics pack to be licensed. During the migration phase, you're making use of Oracle's database lifecycle management pack for Oracle databases. Additionally, you may use the real application cluster or active data guard during the migration phase. Make sure that you license these accordingly. During the validation phase, you're making use of real application testing. But as we mentioned earlier, this is a prerequisite for using the feature. For more information and documentation on Oracle's database consolidation workbench, please have a look at the Oracle Enterprise Manager 13C documentation. This concludes our demo. Thank you for watching.